tremendous fun to be here with you guys. I am uh, very excited about this space, and uh, I am, as you can see, an industry graybeard, um, and recently lived a startup media company meltdown and implosion, so um, this will be fun, this will be good. I'm hearing a lot from the audience about platforms and multi-directional multi marketplaces, and boy, am I hearing a lot about algorithms. But I'm wondering, everybody is trying to sell things to a, an audience that is actually, um, it's, it's challenging. So I don't want to scare anybody off, because I'm pretty excited about this kind of thing. But when we're doing some of the research here, which will include things like reports, but also marketing services like webinars and white papers, and trying to figure out the balance for those kinds of things, I'm very much looking for your feedback on how we can help you succeed with this, with this marketplace, because it's pretty tricky. So what I'm going to talk about for the next uh, 10 minutes or so is a survey that we did with our partner, Thrive Analytics, where we surveyed about 550 um, small business owner operators. And they were pretty small. About a third of them were maybe one or two person companies, and a third were 15 plus. But that's a kind of a reflection of what the, what the real world looks like. They're also uh, more represented by, say, services, whether it's personal services or business services, few, some restaurants and some retailers. And I think, as you'll see, uh, from the data, the retailers are probably the most, um, most sophisticated in terms of marketing and media. And at the risk of contradicting my dear friend and colleague Stephen from this morning, um, media is still pretty interesting because it is still a way that you interact with, uh, uh, you know, these the, this, this local merchants interact with their customers and how they guide them through that infrastructure. And as you probably know, everybody's out there been selling to these people. It's as hard to pry IT dollars out of them as it is to pry, you know, advertising dollars out of them as well. So they're, they're, it's a challenging company. So we're going to talk about some of the problems they're facing and how you as, uh, as technology and services providers can help them out. So the first uh, characteristic is, is that what we found is, is that this audience or this customer base really is embracing digital. They love digital, but they may not quite understand it yet. Um, their primary objective, as you can see, what this illustrates is different types of local merchants, and then what, percent, what percentage of the respondents in the survey said their primary objective was, for instance, acquiring new customers. And look at that. Everybody, especially the, the retailers and the, um, uh, and the service and the restauranters, are definitely looking at new customers. And this is actually, this is tricky because everybody wants new business, but even with a, comp with a product as good as Thumbtack, you're going to realize that you don't really want to pay for your, you know, reacquiring a customer that you've done business with, you know, over and over and over again. So, um, a lot of them just are not particularly tuned into that customer retention kind of a thing that, in the long run, could pay off quite well. Um, this slide reflects what our our, uh, our survey respondents said were the most uh, effective medias and, and marketing techniques that they were using. So you can see that online advertising and search and e -market, email marketing are right at the top. This reflects, this is actually reflected by the budgets as well. Those are moving that direction aggressively. Um, local newspapers and daily deals are uh, still part of the mix, definitely. And in fact, a bigger part of the budget on average than they were as in terms of deemed effective. So people are kind of, you know, the audiences out there, the customers out there, the merchants out there are kind of getting a little I don't want to say fed up, but they're, they, they want to prove, they want to move their mix in digital as much as they can, but they're, they, because they believe it's effective, and yet they need, you know, they need a kind of a multi, uh, you know, a multimedia program. Um, relatively few of them were spending over half of their budget on only one, on only one of those media, but, but there were some, so, and, and they did tend to be uh, just as many digital as there were print, so. Things are changing, and they're changing pretty rapidly. <laughs> um, one of the things that we did find out is that they love social media. So uh, two-thirds of the local merchants we surveyed were using social media in support of their marketing uh, efforts. And what they were using was primarily Facebook, as you might expect, um, but a lot of LinkedIn for professional services, and Twitter's up, and, and Pinterest, as we saw this morning, were on the rise. And I think that one of the things that, uh, that will sort of reflect the let's not say lack of sophistication, but perhaps lack of time or effort or experience or expertise. Um, about 80% of them, even though they're all using Facebook, 80% of them were not paying anything. So they're only about five or six or 7% were, uh, were actually paying 
uh, doing paid campaigns on Facebook. So there's, they're not getting their money's worth probably out of, uh, or, the, or their efforts worth out of, out of Facebook. Um, what they were trying to get from social media is the same thing as they were trying to do with their other uh, media and marketing uh, things. They're, they're definitely looking for leads for businesses, um, building brand awareness a little bit more, engaging customers. Remember that magical, uh, <laughs> magical thing social media was supposed to do? But you know, over a third of them had no expectations. And, Yet they're spending serious time on it. So they've embraced this medium, but they're, not, they're still not clear on what they're doing with it. So let's, let's dive into some of the channel, challenges they're facing. The classic one, as I'm sure you've all heard and we've heard from the, from the stage several times today, is not enough time. Um, with the biggest challenge facing digital marketing, um, all of these owner operators and managers of, of uh, small businesses said they, most of them said they didn't have enough time. A lot of them said they didn't have knowledge or expertise. Um, they don't, they're, Actually, they're updating a lot of their content pretty regularly, but they're doing it manually. Most of them, are, most of these, let me re remind you that these are pretty small businesses. <laughs> they're usually, you know, one or two or three people uh, shops, and yet they're dealing with primarily with one technology or marketing supplier in most cases. Some of them, I'd say over half of them, according to our survey, were working with up to three. And yet, they're getting bombarded with marketing messages from technology and marketing suppliers. Uh, and again, another half of them said they were getting three messages a day from, um, you know, from marketers trying, or from tech companies trying to help them do this, and they just don't have the time or expertise to process that stuff. So as you'll see, if you look at the report in detail, we've got a little bit of advice on how to, how to make a pitch uh, to these kinds of companies. Um, we asked a similar question about social media and got an even kind of scarier results, so time consuming to manage is not surprising, that was the uh, number one uh, thing, but <laughs> remember, two thirds were using social media in support of their marketing and yet 38% of them say they haven't seen any return from it. And the reason is, is that they don't, they don't really know how to measure return. And they don't have this kind of, we've been talking a lot about data um, that they can use, but these are, not, these are not executives that are used to working with data in many cases nor do they have the time or expertise to do it. So I think one of a, it behooves us as an industry to try to create either a mechanism, whether that's VARs or training or uh, templates or whatever it might be, is obviously do-it-yourself uh, service, self-service kinds of products would help, but you've got to get somebody in there and train them to do that as well. I think that is what is really lacking. There's lots of great technologies and tools out there uh, to help these guys do their marketing, but. Um, these, they just don't have the, uh, the expertise or the time or the wherewithal to, to take advantage of them. So we asked them the big question, where do you need the most help? And two takeaways from this slide. There's, there's three things that bubbled to the surface. Um, SEO, managing e-commerce or their, or their company website, and then social media. But you'll also notice when they're forced to choose, it's a broad variety. So I just spent two minutes saying they need help. And, and, they don't, and they need some analytics, so they need some data, or they need some kind of management tools, and yet it's got to be across media. So a lot of the single set solution uh, or, or focus solution products that are reaching the market today are not going to help them manage their entire program. Remember, they're still using a lot of print, and we heard they're, they're, that people are still using, not still using, they're going to be using television and radio until, uh, until those media go away, which is not going to happen anytime soon. So they need cross-media management tech, uh, tools, and yet, and yet these guys are like, don't have the time to figure out how to use it. So it's a, it is a big challenge for us in the industry. So have some, some ideas on how you might help. So I, I earlier alluded to the fact, uh, I keep saying unsophisticated, let's say they're focused. They're actually trying to do their business. <laughs> the owner operators are probably the, actually the ones that are doing most of the work themselves. So we asked them, um, how do you determine if your marketing program is working? They talk directly to their customers and they sort of ask them. They're not taking advantage of things like promotion codes or, or uh, um, some of the more you know, call tracking techniques. They're just, they're just not there yet. Um, they do all have websites, as we've been seeing. This is, it's not like it was five years ago, but it still has a long way to go before they, they can have this kind of marketing platform that they can use. Um, we asked them if they used a marketing dashboard, and over half of them don't use anything remotely resembling a dashboard, and the ones that do are basically using 
you know, Hootsuite or something like that as a uh, social media management platform, which is, um, again, as I, as I noted, they're very excited about social media, um, but they're not measuring it or, it's me or you know, attributing its effectiveness to actually generating new leads or conversions or anything like that. Again, here retailers were more sophisticated. They were the ones that were most likely to use a general purpose marketing uh, tool. And, um, and I think they're sort of, if you're building a, you know, some businesses with tools and things, you might actually start with them as a way to, uh, uh, to kind of gain learnings when you get into the business services and restaurants and things like that. So they're also looking ahead. Um, I hadn't talked much at all about mobile because I'm sitting here trying to scare you to death about uh, more traditional media. But every, the, uh, these, these businesses are very excited about mobile and they're also very excited about next generation point of sale uh, systems. So they're realizing that um, this is where Steven's uh, hypothesis is definitely gonna bear fruit. Um, they're realizing that the infrastructure or the back end that they're using to manage their business should have some connection more than just a vague one um, to, their, to their marketing and their advertising effort, expert, efforts. So they're, they're starting to think along that way and they're starting, and that's, that's what's kind of cool. So um, we asked, uh, we can see where the early adopters are starting to shake out. So um, we sort of split the, the respondent space into people who, who had systems that could accept mobile payments and people that couldn't accept mobile payments. And so the gray is the ones that can't, or that, mm, I think that's backward. No, no, the green is the ones who, who can accept it. And you can see that the, what they're, they're excited about, they're, they're, their expectations for how much business they're gonna do through digital means um, you know, through their website or through a smartphone or, uh, you know, over the air in general um, is directly correlates with how much they've got these payment systems in place. So again, that could be a source of learning um, to companies like yourselves that are selling to them or it could be in a place for experimentation um, for figuring out how to connect those dots between, um, between the promise of mobile and the actual, and, you know, converting some of their businesses to digital, getting people to actually uh, commit. And as I said, the other thing they're kind of excited about, besides they're still excited about social media, um, is using these next generation point of sale systems that they've been hearing about. So, um, and what they're hoping to do with that, um, if they're the retailers in particular, is they are indeed realizing that these, um, these systems will give them data that they can use about their own customers. And again, I think that, remember those retailers were the ones that were, were slightly more interested in doing um, in tracking return uh, business, or uh, maybe they're starting to think about lifetime cost of ownership, which is a, is a kind of a scary concept <laughs> to a lot of these guys. And uh, they don't really necessarily want to pay over and over and again to reacquire the same customers, but they don't have anything that even remotely resembles a CRM database in their, in their back rooms. Um, so they're looking to build that out, and they're looking to, um, uh, mobile is the other thing you can see at the top that's kind of creeping in on everybody. So even the restaurants who are the sort of the, the uh, flailing aroundest <laughs> of the most of the bunch um, are seeing it as a great way to, uh, to get into the mobile space with the, with the new systems as well. So again, things that are on their horizon seem to be these, uh, um, they are starting to think about trying to tie things together and they're looking for some new systems. Um, they might be willing to invest in new systems to, to enable themselves to do that. So I've got to leave you with a couple of key takeaways and I'll be here uh, for the rest of the day and uh, would love to actually talk to you about um, what, your, what your needs would be in terms of research. I mean, we're, we're trying to figure out what kind of things we should do our homework on to make events like these richer, but to also you know, create new products and services uh, for you as well. So I'd love to talk to you about that. So the first, uh, my first takeaway is that they, the small local merchants, they love digital. <laughs> They're embracing it with both arms, but they need quite a bit of help on getting their minds around it and actually sort of doing the operations, uh, running the day-to-day -day and seeing the payoff of it so they know where to invest again. Um, the social media as a marketing tool is still the shiny new toy, I think. Um, mobile is close on the horizon, uh, but they're all aggressively embracing social media and yet um, not really using it to its, uh, you know, admitting that they're not even uh, understanding whether they're getting any return on it. Um, so there's some opportunities there to, to help them understand that. Um, I think that the, uh, one of the keys here is to create some kinds of uh, analytics products or dashboards to manage um, their media and their marketing and their, and their e-commerce, but it's gotta be something that is like 
very simple. Um, it's got to be, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it's got to be streamlined. So the idea that you could help them by building templates or training programs or videos, plus you need to get them kind of engaged in the first place. You need to do things like uh, self-diagnostics so that they can get started um, and then get going uh, with your products. But, um, and, and maybe even pre-populated with benchmarks and things. And then on the near horizon, they're very psyched about uh, about mobile marketing and mobile selling, and they're also pretty interested in those next generation point of sale systems. So again, I appreciate your time, thanks very much, and I'm around for a while, and I'll be working with the Street Fighters for, from now, and look forward to uh, having this conversation in person. Thanks very much.